the Combat Achievement Diary. A series of tasks made to challenge players in old school RuneScape. I've done them several times before, but now I'm taking them on while keeping my combat as low as possible. This is Low Percent. Yo ho! Welcome back to Zerkman. Last episode, we took on the Awakened Desert Treasure 2 bosses and came out on top. Today, we're taking on the supposed easier versions, alongside some other upgrades we missed last time. Now about that bond giveaway, it was great to see people give genuine guesses on how many orbs it took, but as I said, if multiple people got it right, then no one would win, even if there was a bad actor in there. But I feel bad, so I'll give away a set of Dragon Claws this video. Simply like the video, be subscribed, and leave a comment saying anything you want, and just make sure your RSN is in there and have me added in game so I can message you that you won. I'll do the drawing next Sunday, so that's plenty of time for you to get in. Just a reminder, I am not a giveaway Andy, so do not get used to this at all. Anyways, let's get started with today. I may have had two fiascos with unlocking Void so far. I want to unlock the Elite Void and Crystal Halberd before getting into anything else today, both of which are locked behind that Western Hard Diary. The last steps I had left to do was hunt down 300 Chompy Birds and defeat Zolra. During the Elite Combat Diary cleanup, I actually wanted to knock out all the Zolra tasks because they're pretty quick points, but problem was, you need Regicide to fight Zolra, and we only just unlocked that. Rats no, it's, it's not like an audience, it's like you're doing a I virtual class. I'm trying to remember right, what man. it's called. Yo, sure. you know the Zolra speedrun task? Stupid Zerk just got it on the first kill. Bro, That's your awesome. That account is as hell, bro. You just I got like a blood scythe for fun, mm -hmm. like... You just get speedrun tasks for fun with no rigor, yeah. like, okay, man. Then there's this task to build a painting in your house. A sheep. Now the diary is actually done. I don't have much left to train for Song of the Elves, so I'm throwing the lamp on Hunter since that's the slowest requirement I've got left. Now we can actually grab our Elite Void. There's a few places where this is going to be best in slot for us, so this is a very important pickup. Nothing, nothing, nothing. 50 on the dot. What's the rhyme? Hit why not? It. Why not? Ooh, hey, we got some money. <laughs> look, look, look. With your eyes, look. 68 Herblore. 69 Herblore, oh my god! And that's 70 Herblore. Only one skill left before we can do the Song of the Elves. And that's 70 Hunter. Let's get questing. Ah, yes, I'm a Knight of Arduin holding a, uh, a super overpowered staff. I'm going to war, and not just any war. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and it's free to play right now for PC and consoles. You can play with over 2,000 vehicles that span over 100 years of development since the 1920s, including tanks, planes, ships, and more. Join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles today. War Thunder has just released its new Alpha Strike update bringing in a new ground map based on Northern Holland, and new jets, tanks, helicopters, and ships. Immerse yourself in the intense combat of War Thunder, where incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects place you right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. But there's also in-depth customization of vehicles, so you can apply your own camouflage or historical markings to personalize them. Play War Thunder now for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, by using my link in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players that haven't played in six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium account. It's available for a limited time only, so be quick. A big thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Dude, you just got one hit by a steel halberd. So it begins. Everyone count along. Oh, he's pogging hot dogging. He's pogging hot dogging. Go. No, you. I. Dude, I am so. Ah, <gasps> he's the chosen one. Third try. Not bad. Hang on. Oh, wait. He's surviving the RNG checks. No way. Three and done again. It's
it's not the worst quest in the world. It still is, but like, it's not this time because I succeeded the books again. Just normal Zerk being on permanent life support things. So for the Saren fight, the game somewhat enforces you to use magic, but there is another way to tackle her. She has a cap on how high you're allowed to hit, similar to how Zora caps your max hit to a 50. And the scythe allows you to hit three hit splats at once. So dropping a double BGS spec to soften her up, the scythe will actually outperform any magic weapon you decide to bring. And for the big blast attack, we're utilizing the Phoenix Necklaces. For those unaware, the Phoenix Necklace will negate any other incoming damage that's targeting you when activated. And you can set it off really early because it takes her so long to charge up the attack. And that's Song of the Elves. Done. So I will take the Crystal Halberd and... What? Oh god, I forgot the coins. I'll be right back. Alright, here we go. The first Crystal Halberd on the account, and I need to switch it style real quick to make sure I don't put my account over. There we go. The key to some combat achievements, maybe not. We'll be, we'll be doing some studies on this thing later. Okay, now the big thing is... This Iron Halberd has been in my bank as a placeholder for this thing when I like wanted to keep it organized. Now we can officially get rid of the Iron Halberd and the Crystal Halberd now is a spot in the bank until I clear GMs and then it becomes revamped anyway, but bye-bye Iron Halberd. You were good while you lasted. And since we're here, we'll get a little sample of the Iron Man prison. I figure since I'm here, we'll knock out some freebie tasks. First of which requiring me to complete the gauntlet with a full set of tier 3 armor. Ah, oh, it's two bears! <laughs> All right, there should be a bunch of them done there. Three, two, one, no prayer potion. And I've got to do the same for the red version. Whew. Just enough time. Made it. Four seconds to spare. Why is my clan chat acting like GDQ all of a sudden? Orb, orb. Nice. First try and I got like everything done at once. Three, two, one mage, perfect. Corrupted warrior. And a gauntlet cape. Oh my God, such a prestigious item. And my loot is... Yeah. A little bit more cleanup, and we scoop up the no armor in the blue gauntlet, and its perfection task. And speaking of cleanup, I decided to clean up the bank a little bit, and found these Konar keys knocking about. Aren't we a little clogger? And look at all that bank space, that's so much less anxiety now. Now something else that starts today, is the stack up of Elite Clue caskets. For whatever reason, Jagex thought it would be a fun practical joke to put a mimic kill on the combat achievements. I'm going to be doing a lot of content that drops elite clues, so I'll be passively stacking them up for the last episode, when we're ready to close out the helmet. And if you notice in the bank, I've got plenty of dark totems. If I ever need a hard clue to grab from a master, I'll kill a Scotizo, and who knows, maybe I'll get a free elite clue to go with it. Now the first elite clue source has to do with this backpack. It's hideous, so Vorkath is going to be on the menu. Now while I'm going to have alt accounts to restore my health and special attack, I'm also picking up the mahogany planks I need for 84 construction. Unlike GM to GMs, I plan on using this account a fair bit when the series is over. The planks have all been bought, so it's time to put them in my bank and let future me deal with it so I can go raid with my friends. This is the first raid where I have a Crystal Halberd for bloat, so going for flinches like this is actually possible. Oh, Clipper's Iron got something. Nothing, 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 nothing. You know, let's just save you some time. Yeah, that elite clue I got earlier, I got a step that is really easy to do if you're not me. Um, one of the items I got equipped is a dragon medhelm. Guess who can't do that? Now, the Vorkathing begins. Except, I have OCD and need to clear these out. So let's take a moment to talk about the barehanded Vorkath. It's... It's something. As a Zerker, damage is something we're not too good at. We tried multiple different setups, including the Tyrannical Ring, Myth's Cape, all to amp up that crush accuracy but settle on the standard Defender, Inferno, and Ultar setup for a nice 11 minute and 37 second kill. That looks so cursed that that's my new PB. Next one I wanted to clear away was the 10 kill trip. On GM to GMs, I meleeed Vorkath and used the Ancient God Sword to keep me topped up. But he got to use a Dragon Hunter Lance, and I don't quite get that luxury. I gave it a go with the Grazi Rapier, but it just didn't quite cut it. So I tried the Bring 11 Bruise and just hit it with ranged setup and picked up the 5 perfect kills and 10 kill trip without a hitch. But not everything's all sunshine and roses here at Vorkath. Those who have gone out of their way to grind the 54 second speedrun know exactly the pain that it brings, and even more so if you don't have alts to expedite the process. The strategy for forcing the completion of the speed time gravitates around resetting the instance for your ZCB to hit a natural ruby bolt effect. 
then following it up with a special attack to fire a guaranteed Ruby Bolt activation. Then it comes down to how lucky you are with your following hits. I tried out using the Venator Ring and Dragon Knives to make use of the remaining special attack, and to put myself one cycle behind Vorkath so I don't rag myself with this first special attack. But ultimately, this was not the way. I got to a minute and two seconds before deciding it was time to switch things up. Light Bearer was going to be replacing the Venator Ring. Following my first DCB spec, three seconds into the fight, it will take me 45 seconds to regenerate enough special attack to use either Dragon Claws or the Void Waker special attack. A six second window to make use of my meter. And ending on melee becomes important not just to save ticks to better line up with the fight timer, but also projectile speed. I've also switched out the Void for Missouri. While it's a drop in max hits, it's technically better DPS and gives me more security to not hit zeros after getting a double ruby opener started. Hours would pass and I'd be no closer to securing the 54 second fight. I started to just complete kills that had zero chance of winning just to progress the 100 kill count task looming over my head. Not to mention the Vorkath head wouldn't be too bad of a pickup either. Speaking of, it took 47 kills, just below 50 where you get the guaranteed drop. This was a bit of a mood improver since I don't have to wear the Revbot backpack anymore, but the grind continues. I decided to toy around with some very troll setups, which included a Dragon Dagger and Crystal Halberd special attack. Needless to say, these got benched faster than they got drafted. The final setup would be the Light Bearer camp on ranged, and a full melee switch with Rapier and Void Waker to finish. The times I was getting when closing out failed runs were looking better than previous, but not quite where they needed to be. Until the 11th hour struck, when Guthix decided to bless us after drinking so much of his tea. Okay, here we go. Complain it into existence. A number above a 15, I'm shocked. Okay. Tell me more. Ruby. Either that's it, or it's like just off. It's over! It's over! It's over! Oh my god, 11 and a half hours of resetting this stupid boss and it's done! Following the speedrun, cleanup just involved Wooks walking Vorkath, beating him without prayer, and of course, beating him 100 times. And when I said this took over 11 hours, I was not joking. All of this was streamed on my Twitch channel, and I'm sorry for everyone who watched that live. Those two days were absolute hell. But what if I told you, Vorkath wasn't the worst thing to happen in today's video? More on that later. You have to kill this with Arclight. For whatever reason, this one you can't like fire a shot with Tebow and then like equip Arclight while the arrow's in the air. It doesn't work like that, but it works with other monsters. They have these weird kill it with a, a certain weapon tusk. Like Sakatizo or whatever. This one, like, checks whatever you actually hit it with. Up next on the Ruby Renegade is the Grumbler, also known as Phantom Muspa. Dropper of the infamous and elusive. <gasps> what? Charged? Ice? I'll be going for the speedrun time as the first task. And just like old Vorkath, the strategy for the opener is exactly the same. This is not going to get old, I swear. However, this speedrun has a bit more depth than just hope you hit big. The biggest of time savers being the smite phase skip. The smite phase requires you to, as the name suggests, smite away the Grumbler's prayer shield. And getting through this without an activation of the sapphire bolts takes an eternity. And even in a perfect world where you're lucky enough to get the bolts to activate twice, it's still an additional 6 seconds being added to your fight at the very least. While skipping the phase does require you to hit big, there are two important things to remember when executing. The first of which is being within two tiles of Muspo when firing your Twisted Bow, so your projectiles are timed properly. The second attack you do needs to register on a very specific cycle, and if it's just one tick off, then it doesn't work. 
The second is to make sure you either don't have a Thrall out for your second attack, or resummon it just as you declare your second attack. Unfortunately, Overkill messes with the phase skip in a negative way, so we need to make sure that Tony Bones doesn't mess it up. This is what I like to call perfectly timed live commentary. Like, if a fight contains, like, a natural ruby opener into a ruby spec and a smite skip, it probably just gets you the time. And if it doesn't, then you might be one of the unluckiest people ever. There we go. That should do it. So if you just natural ruby into ruby spec and get a smite phase skip, you get the speed time pretty much every time. That's why I don't think the speed time is that bad. You just need to execute two things and then you're good. You're you're in the clear. Now it's time to clean up the other junk. Salamander. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Jagex like 10 kill Vorkath trips so much. They did it for Muspa too. Dude, that's just like, that is so mean. He's actually just laughing in my face like, I could just hold this for eight months and hopefully it passed the poll and then I can do it, but no! And after a few more kills, we close the books on the Grumbler. On to the next boss, and surely it's not another Ruby Bolt boss, right? No, it, you're wrong. Guess what strategy we're using for our opener again? Thankfully, unlike Vorkath, the Vengeance spell actually works here, but you can only use it on his melee attacks. Alright, easy one and done. Quite literally, easy one and done. <laughs> <laughs> now down the checklist, starting with unconventional. You've got to beat Leviathan while being on low hit points and limiting yourself to mithril ammunition. Dude, I did it again! I'm too used to the change they made! I was like, I knew it's three ticks, my muscle, muscle memory just like sends it. That's what I died to! <laughs> I died to him burping. <laughs> Unconventional! Now onto the five perfect kills. Luckily, Jagex likes making the game easier, so they don't have to be in a row like they did at Vorkath. Wait. I might need Shadow Barrage. Get me out! Okay, I gotta go get Shadow Barrage. Okay. I wanna make sure I don't get hit by rocks and also, uh... Can't fall behind. If you get hit by one of the balls outside of the thing... Nice. If you get hit by one of the balls outside of the... Jellyfish, then it fails perfect. I heard, like, the splash sound effect. I'm like, don't tell me that failed it. Uh, it was just, like, the, uh... The layover. Alright, now we just kill it... I think 39 more times, because it counts the, uh, the Awakened. But first, a friendship rating session. We failed perfect ver- Shut up. I'm just saying it names and shames. Why do you still need it? Maybe if you weren't bad, you wouldn't need it. <laughs> Bye. Oh my- wait, you're actually- Whoa. Wait. He's a gamer. Peanut. How hard did you calculate that? Not that hard. Yeah, spoiler alert, we got nothing. For the rest of the Leviathan grind, I've got the gas stations outside and an inventory full of restores. And yes, I will be picking up some of the loot. And the 50 kill count has been closed. We can leave the lair of the deep sea fangly fish. Next up, we have Vardorvis, with a speedrun time of 55 seconds. And we have a slightly different opener this time. 
While Vardorvis is idle and waiting to be engaged, he's immune to ranged and magic damage, so we're waking him up with a nice scythe swing, then going for the natural ruby bolt activation afterwards. The chance of getting a ruby bolt to go off is not affected by ranged accuracy, so just the one-way switch is fine here. What needs to happen after isn't as fine. Since Vardorvis' ranged defense isn't exactly on the low side, I'm opting to use Dragon Claws as my special attack weapon. From there on out, I literally have to hope that I hit big. This task has taken some main accounts with copious amounts of game knowledge and experience several hours to complete through brute forcing. Vengeance and Thralls are all fair game here, unlike Vorkath, but all that help only gets you so far. Not long after starting, we did some math and found out Void was superior here, so the Void grind is already paying off. Before we go any further, I'd like to inform those unaware about the five stages of grief. This Vardorva speedrun task took me through all five of those, starting with stage one, Denial. When getting this task done on my med level, it took me about an hour to score the time with only 82 attack, and I didn't just get the speedrun time, I knocked it out of the park. So in my mind, I'm thinking there's no way that this takes longer than Vorkath. It's got 50 less hit points than Vorkath, has no damage reduction phases, and it can take damage from both Vengeance and Thralls. Stage 2? Zero, zero? Zero? Is Anger. Enough time has passed, and none of the kills have even gotten close to the target time. Just kill me, honestly. Stage 3 is Bargaining. And this is where the coping really starts to set in. The new PB, at least. It is. If I had a little bit better luck, then that would have been the time, but eh. Aww. It looked good. It looked good for a second. That was good, though. I'm happy with that one. It's not the time, but let's see. It's a sub one minute, so it's a new PB, and that was off a single ruby. So you know what? I'm happy with that one. That that was that was a good run. That was actually a good run. Stage four is depression. I've realized that many hours have passed with no sense of progression. As bright as Vardorvis' arena was, I felt that I was in the dark, unable to see the light at the end of the grind anymore. Even with a new personal best of under a minute, the hits I had in that run were well above average. Luck was on my side, but it just wasn't enough. But then... Maybe that's it? Or it's, like, just below? A run with luck that a talented gambler could only dream of, and it still wasn't enough. This brings us to stage 5, Acceptance. Realizing now, I cannot stray away from the strategies that have worked thus far. It was time to reuse the opener that we've been using since the first boss. After seeing the math of how low a chance the Zarite crossbow special attack had to hit, I accepted that this was the only way it could be done. Who knew Vardorvis would just end up being Vorkath in disguise all along? You might notice there is also a new weapon in my inventory, the Crystal Halberd. While this was an incredibly troll item at Vorkath, it has a decent chance of hitting here, and with the potential to deal over 100 damage in one swing, it was worth a shot for the final hit. I disregarded how long it would take from here on out, knowing that it would only be a matter of time before the perfect run presented itself before us. That was it right there. If this, it, the thing just hit... If it just hit a 46, it was over. Stage 6. Insanity. Over 15 hours had gone by. Rational thinking was now a thing of the past. Madness had begun to set in, and the voices grew louder and louder. Why do you keep leaving the fight? I thought ranged accuracy didn't affect Ruby. Is Void any good here? Did you try Void Waker here? With 70 defense, you get piety. I went and got dinner. This and you're still here. What's the GM's Why don't you get the tablet? You say you try this on the iron neck. Is Fang not good here anymore? Do you think Jagex should change the time? Is he doing the two mil I think you should camp side instead of How long has it been since you started? This looks terrible to do on the Zerka. Are you okay? I think that's it. I think I just got it. Holy f it's done! Christ alive, it's done! Minus 27 hours of life.
And when I said 27 hours of life, I was not exaggerating. Just like Vorkath, this was all live-streamed on my Twitch channel, and I'm so sorry to those who watched it, and Danny who helped me all to bulk of the process. I've never asked for pity likes and subscriptions before, but I think this is as good a time as ever, really. But now that the worst speedrun of this series so far is out of the way, it was time for the goofy task that Vardorvis had to offer. Now at the time of doing this task, the Zombie Axe only had a displayed price of 500k. Who knows if it goes up or down from here, but the actual price was just shy of 2 mil. This is important because of the budget cutter task. Beat Vardorvis with less than 2 mil in gear, and it goes off GE value. Downgrading to an Amulet of Strength, Climbing Boots, and a DDS, the game thinks we're under 2 mil, even with the full Void and Infernal Cape value. Next up is Axe Enthusiast. In my opinion, one of the funniest tasks that Jagex has ever come up with. You need to survive 3 minutes of Vardorvis' enrage phase in the middle of the arena without leaving, and that starts at 210 hit points. I have to tank an axe here no matter what. I stepped out of the middle by misclicking. Alright, um, redo. After making sure we're in the middle of the arena before that happens and guzzling down 10 brews, we survive the 3 minute cage deathmatch. Then, of course, there's 5 perfect kills and 50 kill count. I'm not gonna bore you with all that anymore. Now comes time for the third Desert Treasure 2 boss. The Whisperer. And you'll never guess what our opener is going to be for this fight. You'll never guess. And I am out of here! Yeah! Yup. A lot of thought went into making these speedrun tasks. The time to beat is 2 minutes and 5 seconds. Thankfully, this one's kind of in the same boat as Muspa. Relying on 2 rubies to start, but when you get them... Why am I fumbling the bag this hard? Next we have Dark Memories. Spend less than 6 seconds in the Shadow Realm. For this you just take a screenshot of the pillars if you need to, and take the chant on the chin, and it's a free 6 points. Also Tentacruel, where you do the kill on the Arceus spellbook, another free 4 points. And there's Perfect Whisper, 5 perfect kills that don't need to be in a row. Up next we have Duke. To avoid OCD, we're clearing Mirror Image. You can only attack Duke when he attacks you. This one can be a bit tricky if you don't do the cheese recoil method, but if you're good at timing the first hit, the rest will sync up until he does another special attack. And of course me being the smart man that I am, I forget to bring the arc light for this kill and have to karate chop it to death. Now begins the Duke speedrun. A time to beat of 1 minute and 25 seconds. You'll be happy to know that this speedrun is completely ruby bolt free. Instead, it's... That was a good speedrun. This speedrun has a bit more going on, though. For starters, the prep phase we're going to be using a stack of mushroom dust instead of making potions. Since I'm only 70 herblore, I get 5 dust per mushroom instead of the main account 6, so that's an extra 1.2 seconds I spend per kill. We also make full use of Vengeance, Thralls, the whole kit and caboodle. And since the kill timer starts when Duke wakes up, we have to do a non-speedrun kill before even attempting a speedrun time, because we have to run all the way up to the mushrooms. After getting arthritis using all the mushrooms on Duke, we open with a BGS to lower his defense and get on a proper attack cycle. We stand away from Duke to make him want to use the magic attack on us twice, so we can get off a Dumble Vengeance to give a big head start. Nice. Anyway, after the Duke has done his fifth attack, we use a Dragon Claw special attack and flinch back to dodge the freeze, and we'll be in perfect cycle to hit him with the scythe and not tank the stomp. From here, it's just praying to Guthix that the hits are there, and dropping another Vengeance at the end if it's available. Alright, well, let's go put this on the ring, I guess. That was, uh, definitely not the time. <laughs> that might do it? Nope. Oh, two seconds, are you joking? Dude, that Venge at the end! It's huge too! Oh, oh, that hurts so bad! Two, three, four, five. Could be it, as long as Scythe doesn't chimp out here.
Yeah, that's definitely it. Gotta be it. It's not the old time, but you know what? We will happily take it when Jagex decides to nerf the game and make it easier. That's all the speed tests done for Desert Treasure 2, thank god. Next, we've got Cold Feet. A perfect kill with run turned off. I'm walking here! Again, I won't bore you with the perfect kills in KC. Let's just get away from these bosses for good. It feels only right that we move on to one of the last solo instance bosses, Zolra. I got the speedrun done when I was doing the Achievement Diary kill earlier, so all that was left was to chin a stack of Snakelings, KO it with the Vengeance spell, and get a run where the Snakelings didn't rag me. This boss requires 150 KC, and while I have alts, I'd rather have my own house pool for this boss. So remember how I said Future Me had to worry about that 84 construction grind? Here he is, being present time me. I've got to get a plus 5 boost from Orange Spices to build the portal nexus to my house, but I don't have a full-grown cat. Thankfully, the community that plays this game is a bunch of nerds, and they found out you can accelerate your cat's growth by fighting in the rat pits. It gets 15 minutes older for a win, and 7 minutes older for a loss. Also, since this game is incredibly jank, you can overflow your kitten's age so that it has to go back in time to grow up. God, I love old school RuneScape. Hmm, not looking good. Look trade. Accept gift. Alright, I didn't get it here, so I'll see what his trade is. Los percent. Alright, I'm looking. If you wield this outfit, you get 100 meters cash prize. Yo, thanks for the 500k. Appreciate it. It's free. Bank everything I give now. Am I getting more stuff for free? Oh my god, 40 mil and full gilded? Oh my god! Say, oh my god, I could win all that? That's incredible! Bank everything I give now. Ah, uh, oh no, I, I hopped to the wrong I hopped worlds, ah! Uh, I don't know what world he's on. I forgot what world I was, uh, I guess we'll miss out on that 40 mil. After a couple of tries, we got the boost we needed, and our house was finally brought into the 21st century. Teleports, pool, and altar, we're ready to go. And since we have all the teleports in our house, it was time for another bank cleaning session. All right, so we're gonna blow everyone's mind here. You can go to this guy right here and he decants all of your like jewelry, and then you can sell them all off. Cause you can't sell fours, threes, and twos of rings of wealth. So I'm gonna be doing that with all of my other jewelry really quick. Now back to the snake. Congrats on the new personal best. Last time I got a PB here, I died on my hardcore iron. Get ready to hear this a lot. Congrats on the new personal best. Grats Last on the new it personal is. Best. Here. Last I time died I got a PB on my here, Iron I Man. died on my hardcore Iron Man. Um, why is certain Damien hanging out in Zolra? What 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 happened here? I realize that I'm a f moron now, because I spent today like experimenting with the like rat pits exploits to make a cat grow up faster. There's one in my f house. I have two of them. Best. Last time I oh got my god, here, wow. I died on my hardcore <laughs> That sounded so enthusiastic. <laughs> ooh, ooh, yeah. And an elite with it, no way. So I've gotten the elite step that requires you to travel to Dragon Tooth Island. I have no clue how many times we'll need to do this step, but it costs 500 ecto tokens, or 1800 prayer experience for permanent access. I think we can manage that. 70 fletching to make a U longbow? This isn't that long of a grind at all. Why not? Hang on, I'm getting traded something for free really quick. Hey, what is he uh, giving me? Let's hope this turns around my pet luck at next. This is all I've been getting XD. Oh, TY. I'm expecting him to say wear this gold armor. Do you raid often? No gilded armor or scepter? Nice. Added. Bro, they actually just like hit up the f scam bots with like both is in crystal. Like, do you raid often? No gilded armor or scepter. Nice. Added. This is the most conversation that I've ever had before in my life. What did he give you? He gave me 100 Nihil shards, which I'm going to sell for 300k. I've made 800k off of scam bots today. It's no awesome. No way they're giving you free Dude, shit. Dude, I love this new scam bot. It's so awesome. Okay, what 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 does it want? What does it want? I, I need to know what this what it wants now. What's 17 squared? I've asked him a simple math question. If he's a bot, he'll be able to get this right, no problem. No human could possibly know that the answer is 289. We can talk in DM. What was the sexual orientation of Freddie Mercury? Who knew training fletching could be so profitable? Casket secured. And Zolra kill count? Done.
Now I want to end today's episode by unlocking the Master Combat Tier rewards. So we're picking up all the stray bosses we've left behind. I even made myself a little checklist. First up is Ardeo. And we're just going to stand here with Blood Barrage and let the game do all the work. What are we saying? Here, come on outside, buddy. Bye. Okay, well, that was uneventful. All right, anyway, back to what I was doing. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> what are you doing? He's, like, just running in with Void Waker. Like, no mage opener, no TB opener, no rain, like, no nothing. Just raw dog in the Void Waker. All right, anything on last kill? Maybe? Money? Chaos runes. Oh, my God. I'm actually going to bank that. That's an elite clue. Oh, what are we doing? Oh. Hello, little guy. This is the only account I have that has this pet. He's so cute. He's my little squishy, and now he will be my squishy. He even says squishy. Nice. Yay! And I got a little pet out of it, too. Okay, so that's 10 kill count, and I need to do one more without drinking any potions, and this works. And won't fail it, because it's not a potion that restores prayer. It's an item that does it. Praying to the gods. Why is this 2 mil? But, um, what's going on here? Is this a broken bot doing? Clearly not. Oh, there's a loot key. 1.4 mil worth of loot. Oh my god. I guess PK'd 1.4 mil. No way. Yay. All right, let's go see what's in this loot key. I can't wait. 100,000 adamant arrows. No way. Oh my god. And this guy was just walking around the wilderness with his arrow stack. Dude, I can't believe this. No way. Oh. Hello. Wait, I'm, I'm keeping that. Wait. I tip my fedora. Milady. 25. I've achieved combat today. Do I have Hes I'm pretty sure I've got all the other Hespori seat. Uh oh. That's not good. That is not good at all. It appears, though, on my grind to the 70 farming mark for Song of the Elves, I have only gotten three Hespori seeds somehow. I don't know how, but I have. Hang on, just to check. I, I want to know if I cleaned them out of my bank when I cleaned up. I destroyed them. I got rid of them. Because I thought I was done. I'm an idiot. I had them. That's even worse. Oh, no. 71 farming. Hooray. Rats me, I guess. <laughs> I'm depressed. Oh, big. One. I think that does it. It does. Perfect. Right on the dot. 36 seconds. And I'm just two Hespori seeds short of planting the rest of them. This is going to be a fun week of doing seaweed runs. Okay, so it's got to happen as I'm firing the final shot. It can't be post-mortem. There we go. I did the melee only kill. According to Jagex's standards, I did melee only there. A novice, and who is the king now? Alright, so it's ten and a trip. I got the other three done, so it's just KC left, I'm pretty sure. No, I did not get sharks on the last kill. I'm done with KVD! You know what? I deserve that. I deserve that. After the Vardorvis BS, I deserve a 1kc Scurrious Spine. Did I get that one? Yay! Alright, I have to kill it. I don't know what the other ones are. I know there's like a KC. Okay, so it's just 10kc and we're out of here. Cool! I'll clean up the rats. I am the champion of Scurrious.
Okay, well, it died. Is this the expense? No, this is the cheap one. As I say that. Buddy, watch out with the DDS. You're gonna hurt someone. Better have seeds. Ooh, three runite over here. Let me get those. Thank you. Alright, we're over 8,300. We have enough. Alright, I think that's all of them. Okay, that just finished Temporos. Good, 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 good. The next several clips are going to require some explanation. A while ago, it was rumored that you could clear the Chally Time task in Entry Mode Theater of Blood without actually owning a Crystal Halberd. Whether it involved timing your attack alongside an alt with the weapon, I wasn't sure, so it was time to test it out for myself. Alright, he's right over there. Let's see. Okay, so we attacked on same tick, and it didn't work on that one. I wonder if there's more to it than this. I definitely have kill credit. I attacked on the same cycle that it died. A crystal halberd spec was used. This requires some more testing. Let's see if that works. Nope, it doesn't. I same tick with an experience drop, and it didn't work either. So if this doesn't work, then it's inconclusive. No, it doesn't work. Okay, so I did one where I was alive with the Crystal Halberd at the end, one where I was dead with the Crystal Halberd at the end, one where I same ticked a Blowpipe hit with a Crystal Halberd at the end, and one with a melee attack with a Crystal Halberd at the end, all done by uh, that guy. And neither of them got the task completion, so if there is a workaround for it, it has to be a different setup that I'm unaware of. But I think it's just hearsay. I think it's just straight up hearsay, so I will get it done the old-fashioned way now. I'm so sad this trick didn't work, but, you know... It's Chally time, I guess. That would've been really cool if it did work, because then sub-100 combat Zuckhelms might've been a thing, but it's not. I've just achieved combat, how does that make you feel? Alright, and... Aww. Didn't get any goodies from this boss. All right, that's Venny done. Oh, hello. Oh, he's gonna clear out the world for me. What a nice guy. What a nice dude. He's clearing out Venny on for me. Now, do I get the kill for this is the question. Aw, I don't get credit for it. This is why we don't like Xerx because we just instantly die to meds. That's a 60, 80. I think that was my last kill too. Minus 700. Aw, oh, no pet to go out. Alright, that's another one done. Alright, I've done over 500 damage to this thing, and I've done more than half of the damage by, like, bringing it down. So if I don't get MVP on this, there is a serious... Pro you gotta be kidding me. We have another phase. 28 HP. Alright, if I don't get MVP, there is a serious problem, and I'm going to spend 30 minutes soloing. There we go. That is my MVP. I got the Infernal Ashes. Now we go to the Mass World. <laughs> uh, looks like there's bones there. Alright, if I'm able to count, then this should be one of the hardest combat tasks ever. Do five Zalcano while paying attention to the game. Oh! That dude just got Ring of Life death. No more Zolcano. Get me out of here. Bye-bye. Since I only needed seven more points, I decided to swing on down to the gauntlet to get an idea of how the speedruns would go. I killed it with a kick. I am to be surprised that it's under 730. Dude, that's not even under 730. That's a four-minute boss fight. Good lord. My damage just does not exist. <laughs> I think that's like 430, maybe. No! That's three ticks away from just one and dunning the GM time. At least I got the master achievements done. Ah, oh, Maron. That's gonna be a really, really weird way to end it. Okay, let's let's go claim our prize. Here's where I get my rewards. I have done more combat tasks. I would like rewards for doing so. And now I have this. I have a lot of teleports to more wreck. I think it's five a day. But most importantly of all. Here. Yeah, five teleports to Mole Wreck, 25 KC for God Wars instead of 30. 
The rolls will last 50%, like, pretty much just these two right here. That's, like, the big things I was looking for. And now something is, like, a form of motivation. I am going to make the Helm of Shame, the GM to Baby's Helmet. It looks absolutely hideous. And the longer it takes me to finish Grandmaster, the longer I need to have this abomination in my bank. Thank you for watching today. And once again, a massive thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to play it for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox Now by using my link in the pinned comment or video description. New and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies. Available for a limited time only, so make sure not to miss it.